Hello, and welcome back to Grass Types, the show where you learn to identify plants, and maybe some other cool things along the way. This time around, we're going to attack that monster of a plant called Indian Pipe. This one's very distinct and super interesting, so you probably won't have any trouble with the ID. Believe it or not, Indian Pipe is from the Ericaceae family, otherwise known as the Heath family. This same family contains blueberries, cranberries, and azaleas. It can be found in temperate regions in North America, excluding the southwest U.S. and northern parts of Canada. This plant can grow in little to no light and is often found in forest understories with much organic material. I don't recommend picking it, as it is somewhat a rare find. To start off with, this plant is almost pure white from the leaves to the flower. In most cases, it can become black if bruised or is sometimes more red in color. Why you ask? Because it doesn't contain any chlorophyll, the cell organ leading to the green color in plants. Its color has led to it being called the ghost plant or the corpse plant. Indian pipe is a perennial plant that has one flower facing towards the ground on each stem. This is where its scientific name, Monotropa uniflora, meaning one turn, one flower, comes from. It's fairly similar to pine sap, but pine sap has multiple flowers on one stem rather than just one. These flowers bloom from roughly June to September. It has four to six petals and ten anthers. At the base of the petals, it has nectaries containing, as the name implies, nectar to attract pollinators. Towards the end of its lifespan, the flower head turns upward and fruiting bodies called capsules form. Tens of thousands of tiny seeds, only ten cells large, are released from these capsules and spread in the wind. So, time to answer your burning questions. How can this plant survive with no chlorophyll? How does it get the energy it needs? Originally, this plant was thought to be saprophytic, obtaining nutrients from leaves and other organic matter, but most don't agree with this anymore. <laughs> People are so stupid. Now it is agreed that it is microtrophic or mycoheterotrophic, heterotroph meaning other feeding and myco meaning fungi. Basically, Indian pipe parasitizes on fungi to get the nutrients it needs. Not just any fungi though, it obtains its nutrients from those fungi participating in mycorrhizal relationships with trees. What is a mycorrhizal relationship, you ask? That's a big word, you know. It's where the hyphae from fungi exchange minerals with the sugars from the roots of the plants. This is a mutualistic relationship where both the plant and the fungi benefit. Then Indian Pipe gets in there and steals some of that sugar and mineral nutrients from the fungi as well. The fungi that Indian Pipe forms relationships with is fairly specific as well. They belong to the Russellaceae family. This parasitic relationship also explains why the seeds can be so small. When these 10 cell large seeds land, they wait for hyphae to enter it to start growing instead of relying on nutrients inside the seed as other plants do. Indian pipe is not the only mycotrophic plant in the US. There are 8 genera and 9 species that fall into this category including snow plant, scientific name Sarcodes sanguinea, found in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. Indian pipe not only has an interesting three-way relationship, <laughs> but it also has some interesting medicinal properties. Native Americans were said to use it as a relief for muscle spasms, aches and pains, and eye infections, though it may be slightly toxic. Something interesting I found when opening up these flowers were little larvae hiding out in the ovaries. Not sure what kind or why they're in there. Let me know if you find the answer. So that's it for Indian Pipe on today's episode of Grass Types. Thanks for watching and be sure to join us again in the next IT panel.